Hi everybody and welcome back to Mrs Mommy Penny Talks and we are now on to episode three of the third series of my podcast and I have another guest to share with you. So very excited to have Jordan Cox here. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm good and thank you ever so much for joining me. Now I've never had a chat to you on my podcast before which is I know. so disappointing that I haven't done it so far <laughs> uh, but very exciting that I've got you on um, after, after a couple of years of having this podcast. So Jordan, for people who don't know who you are, um, although you have a, bit, a little bit of a um, cult status I'd say out in the money saving world. No. You do a bit. You do a bit. So, so you're you've been blogging for um, a long time. You started when you were like fifteen. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, I started when I was fifteen, which was eight years ago now. Which I think is the same as you. We started around the we, same time. <laughs> yes, except for I'm nearly twenty years older than you. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll leave that one out. Um. Yeah, I, th- I just think it's amazing that you'd have the like idea to set up a blog, a, a yeah. money blog, when you're 15. Yeah, well, it was Why around the time. It? it was around the time where I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was still at school. I was still at high school. Uh, yeah. I think I was in year 10. I think, um, and I just. I found that you can save a lot of money with coupons by watching a TV show called Extreme Couponing. Um, yeah. And I watched that TV show and I was like, that's amazing. I want to do that. So I started Googling coupons online, uh, learning how to save money, learning how it works and started saving my mum money on her shopping trip. Uh, and from amazing. there, it just, it just sort of grew and grew. The first week we saved about 10 pounds. Um, yes. Then the next week it was 20. And then that Christmas, we got a Christmas dinner for 10p, including the turkey um oh and my then it gosh. just sort of built from there and i then started my own facebook page to sort of teach people my own tips um, and that went absolutely crazy didn't it yeah it um <laughs> I, I started a facebook page i can't remember when it was i think it was like 2012 and by the next year 2013 i think mostly helped by an appearance i had on bbc breakfast which skyrocketed it uh but it went up to about 100,000 likers in about a year which for a 15, 16 year old was just a bit like, what's so, happening? So what, what, I, I don't know about the BBC Breakfast story. So what, hmm. what was that? So I think I was 16 at the time. Um, and I just got a shopping trip, which was £130 worth of stuff for about £1.62. Oh my I, God. I still remember the prices. That's so bad. Um, but... <laughs> I, I got some kind of email or phone call from someone on my Facebook page actually saying, um, can we use this for a story? Um, yeah. And it went in at page three of the Daily Mail, but, but not that page three. <laughs> um, <laughs> it wasn't like me with coupons over my nipple. But no, it was, uh, it was like a, basically a long sheet of how I did it and this receipt, which was printed into the newspaper. Um, yeah. And from that, just everyone picked it up and then BBC Breakfast called me basically saying do you want to come on next morning and I was like okay um so I I went up to Manchester and and was on the sofa with uh, the presenters the next morning no way and all uh, this it, so, so it, it came from a passion of something that you were intrigued and excited about mm. but it almost just happened like by accident it did yeah <laughs> and this was actually when I did go on BBC Breakfast that was a week before my GCSEs so oh, I, man. I was sort of getting a lot of work through the couponing stuff, and I also had to try and revise my exam. So at that point of my life was very, very hectic. Yeah. Because um, I was obviously I wanted to do well in my exams, but I wanted to try and create a career if I could, um, and that's sort of what I did. I I did well in my exams, um, but as soon as they were done, I paid, I basically left school and started my own couponing business. Yeah, yeah, and so you had that. <laughs> I can't believe you had a Facebook group of like a hundred thousand people at the age of sixteen, and it's it I mean, times have times have changed, haven't they? Like, uh, well, yeah. I think back then it it was. I don't want to say easier to grow. It was easier to grow a Facebook group, wasn't it? Because there weren't so many people or a Facebook page. There weren't so many people doing it. In fact, you're probably one of the first in the country to have even picked up on this like extreme couponing thing. I'm going to say you were the first and (laughs) loads of people came along afterwards and copied Mm. and still are. Um, But um, yes, you suddenly had this huge audience. Mm. How did you even figure out 
what content you should be serving to these people or what mm. you should be talking to them about or, or a strategy <laughs> to be honest i didn't i was still winged it. yeah i was just like okay i have all these people what do i what do i give them um because mm. all of them were older than me basically i, I could mm. see the stats of my fate my page and most of them were sort of women in their sort of 30s and 40s and I, as a 16 year old kid, I had to learn very quickly what they wanted to see. Um, so it was, it was a challenge. Um, but I mean, with, with bloggers, you, you earn a lot of money through like affiliate links and promoting products, but that kind of thing I didn't really want to do back then because mm. um, I was all about the couponing and saving people money. Whereas the affiliate stuff was getting them to buy things where I thought, well, if they're coming here to save money, they might not want to buy this, this brand new dishwasher that's on offer. Yeah. Um, so it was it was tricky to try and sort of monetize that and make it into a business. But um, after a few years of sort of stumbling around with it, I got a job at Money Saving Expert um, and I worked for four years there. And it, that basically taught me a, a lot of skills that I needed for both writing and sort of how to monetize your content through different means. Um, yeah. And then, then last year, 2020, I, I went self-employed. Uh, and now I work for myself on my own my own blog, and I do freelance writing and and speaking when, when uh, it's not COVID. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, I just I just think it's an incredible it's an incredible story to have got to where you've got to. Like you've just celebrated your first year anniversary of your own business. Um, mm-hmm. You had I, I think it's 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 a really clever thing to do actually to um build up your knowledge and your authority um going Mm. to work for a company like money saving expert to get that Mm. like you've now got that on your sort of twitter handle or whatever yeah of course you've you've worked for that incredible company Mm. um and um yeah it leads into doing it all for yourself and how's the first year gone (laughs) as most of it's been well (laughs) The first few months were great because, you know, I had my own freedom. I could choose what I wanted to do. Um, then obviously the big COVID came around um, and I was I was out of work for a good sort of two, three months. And because mm-hmm. I was newly self-employed, I didn't really get much help from the government or anything. So um, yeah, you're, you're another um, excluded person like me and for different mm-hmm. reasons. You were excluded from any support because you were too new self-employed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I was excluded because I'm, I've got a limited company set up. So right. no money for either of us. No, unfortunately. <laughs> I need to set up a, a GoFundMe or a Just Giving. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it sort of tailed off in March. But when sort of COVID died down a little bit in the summer, that's when it picked back up. Um, and I, I had some of my best months at the, at the end of last year, mm. uh, sort of around November time, Black Friday. Um, that was my best month for me. Um, and not not all for the deals on black friday because it was it was just awful last year there wasn't mm. anything good really yeah. um but it's just the kind of time of year and it's and people would come to me for for expertise on basically how black friday works and basically giving them a spiel of how to save money on it if you were buying um so that's where i got a bulk of my work from and hopefully this year it'll it'll be better fingers crossed i think i think the with with the type of jobs we do like talking about money saving and um, Mm -hmm. preparing for the future and making money as well i think there's just going to be more and more demand for Mm -hmm. the um sort of authentic ones of us that are sort Mm. of living and breathing and being quite honest about um how life is affecting us and 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 our finances and stuff Um, and i've certainly seen a real uptake in work from brands because they almost feel like they can't um, talk in in an authentic way because, you know, they're the brand trying to sell something where if Mm. you've got um, somebody out there who's using that product or service and it is genuinely making their life easier, saving them some money, Mm. um, then it's almost like these brands are putting that message into the hands of people like us to, to share with our audience. So it's quite, it's been quite encouraging. It's, the unser- I, I know the uncertainty is it's the worst thing for everybody mm. um and if, if i think the, the biggest thing the uncertainty has taught me is to have as big a safety net set aside mm-hmm. as possible because you just you just don't know what's going to happen yeah. and, and that's also the most difficult thing about being self-employed as well mm-hmm. is um you almost 
you can't you don't work that many months in advance like you know when you're employed you well I suppose it's, it's, it's different at the moment because even jo employed jobs are uncertain but mm. like in three months time I don't know what I'm going to be earning in three months time I mean I've yep. got a rough idea of the next couple of months but will I be all right in three or four months time mm. who knows yeah will I be able to pay the mortgage who knows <laughs> but <laughs> you've sort of got the risks and rewards that go with being self-employed isn't it where you mm. can have like unlimited rewards but it can also be quite stressful as well yeah you can have amazing months where you're earning several thousands a month and you can have one where you're earning nothing so it mm. it sort of balances itself out um although you do have quite a bit more freedom when you're self-employed which i quite enjoy yeah. so before when i was at mse I, I live in essex and i used to travel into london um so that took me an hour and a quarter each way to get in and out and then on top of that, I was stuck in rush hour, so I was packed in a tube every day. Then I had, if mm -hmm. I ever had to buy lunch, I had to spend a lot of money on lunch in London because it's very expensive. Um, mm. And I, I sort of worked it out that if I took away my sort of travel expenses in and out every day, the amount of money that I was actually earning was a lot less than what was ticketed because obviously you earn a bit more when you're in London, but my mm. commuting costs, it add up to about over 4,000 a year just to get in and out of my job. And wow. obviously that's taken out of your take home pay. That's not taken out of your sort of pre-tax pay. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. a massive lump that comes off. Yeah. Yeah. So it almost made it a bit more worthwhile for you to set up your own business. Isn't it? Hmm. So it's a bit different for me because <laughs> I, I have a family and I have like a lot more monthly pay responsibilities to pay for. Um, mm. Something I was just, something I'm in the process of doing um, around this interview as mm. I've, I've, so I've restarted my lockdown spending diaries again. Oh, good. And uh, yeah, they were, all, they were really popular when I published them back in um, sort of March, April, May time, the, the first lockdown. So I thought I'd start them up again. But this past week is when like all my bills hit. Mm. And um, it's when you look at that number, it's like yeah. just the first week of the month. I have like about 1600 pounds just leave my account just in bills because I've, I've got a big mortgage mm -hmm. so um yeah it's quite painful yeah but um, in a way that sort of strives you to work harder to to make up the difference doesn't it if yeah, if I ever absolutely. have a massive a massive bill coming I know like okay I've got a grind now I need to <laughs> make sure I get that um but yeah it's it's I, I really like the freedom of it I like the fact that if you maybe wanted to, to take some time off and just sort of chill for a few yeah. weeks, you can do that. If yeah. you wanted to just go full on for a week and just get everything done for the month, you can do that. It's, I mean, I've been working at two, three o'clock in the morning. If I can't sleep, I've just picked up my laptop and do some work. So it's, yeah. it's the fact that it's so varied, it keeps it quite interesting. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And um, I, want, I want you to talk about as well what happened uh, whilst you're at Money Saving Expert with your help as well, because I know it's oh. something that you've shared and I just, mm -hmm it's a it was such a um well you you nearly died right Basically, you had a yeah. really huge life event to happen to you as a, as a young person so mm. what like how did it how did it happen how did it get so bad and how did yeah. you get out of it gosh so i was diagnosed with crohn's when i, I think i was 17 mm. um and Crohn's disease, if you don't know, it's an illness of like the, the intestinal tract. So you could have inflammation in your large intestine, small intestine, anywhere up to like your throat and your mouth. Um, and it basically causes severe pain, fatigue, um, sort of bowel problems. Um, and it can be really debilitating for some people. Um, at the time when I was diagnosed, I wasn't too bad. I'd have mm. like niggles and pains near enough daily, but it wasn't so bad that I couldn't really work or do anything. Yeah. Um, and it, it was sort of stagnant like that. I was on medication, some like steroids for a good, maybe two years. Um, but it got to a point where it was just sort of slowly going downhill. And it was one of those things where just, it was just like a, a domino after a domino and yeah. it just kept getting worse. I think it, it got to a point where the steroids weren't helping. Um, yeah. this was when I was only two years into MSE. Um, and they were going to put me on um, some kind of injection, which I'd inject myself every sort of six weeks. But before I went on that, I had to have like some tests to make sure that I wasn't, I didn't have tuberculosis or hepatitis B or A or whatever. Um, and it came back that I had latent TB, 
which I had never heard of, but it's like an underlying TB, which isn't full blown, but it's, it, right. the cell is in your lung. And I don't know how I got that. Um, wow. I, I've, I'm still not sure. I mean, I've been to the Middle East. I've been to, I've been on the London Underground. I don't know whether I'd catch it from there. Um, but I had to go on, I think it was a, a three month course of antibiotics for that before I could have any more medication for Crohn's. So oh, as I was wow. taking that, I, li I couldn't control my Crohn's at all and it just kept getting worse yeah. to the point where I couldn't even walk from my bedroom to the bathroom without being severely out of breath. Um, and wow. I, I couldn't keep any food down at all. I was maybe eating a packet of crisps a day. Um, so I dropped down to six stone 10 in weight. Oh and I'm, I'm six foot five. Yeah. I'm six foot five. So I'm, I was basically skin and bone. You could feel oh. every single bone in my body. It was, it was really awful. Um, I think it was January of 2018. I finally got into to hospital. Um, and they obviously need, decided that I needed to have surgery to mm -hmm. take away the really bad bit of bowel, which was causing me a lot of grief. Um, but for that, I was, I was too skinny. I, I, they said my body would not be able to handle a surgery. So they needed to basically build me up to make sure my body survives it. Um, and they tried various different things like a liquid diet and, and like the thing down the nose into the stomach. Um, and none of that worked. So they had to, so it's, yeah. it's just like everything they tried did not work. Yeah. Um, so eventually I had to have something in my arm called a pick line. And that's basically an intravenous feeding where they, there was this bag of sort of whitish fat liquid, which was pumped into my arm, which basically gave me all the calories and nutrients that I needed for the day. Yeah. Um, and I had to be on that for 24 hours a day. So there was no getting off of this sort of line attached to my arm. And that happened for, I was in hospital for um, three months, I think, mm -hmm. three months straight. Um, and they, they actually transferred me to a specialist hospital for sort of um, stomach and, and bowel problems, which was Addenbrooke's in Cambridge, which I think mm. is near you. Mm, um, yeah, yeah. It's an amazing hospital. Yeah, it's fantastic there. Um, but they, I was in hospital for so long because I had to be on this feed and Cambridge was the only place where they could basically discharge you with the feed for you to do it at home. So they gave me the, the lessons for how to basically set it up because it's, it's a really exact science. You have to put gloves on the right way so there's no contamination so you don't, you know, like give yourself an infection or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I was on that again for another two months at home just sort of feeding myself this, this line and I couldn't eat anything in the, in the meantime. Were, um, you, were you putting on weight though? Was it helping you? I was. Weight, yeah, slowly? it was. It From about January to July when I was at my heaviest, I went from six stone 10 to 11 stone. Um, okay. So it, it really bogged me up. Um, yeah. And then I had the surgery. I can't in, believe you were six stone. Yeah, it, it got really, really bad. But I had the surgery in that July um, and it was a colostomy bag. I don't know if you've seen them. They're, they're basically mm -hmm. like bags on your stomach where you've got a tiny bit of bowel coming out and the waste yeah. basically gets deposited in there. Um, yeah. And that sorted me right out. I, I had the surgery within a week. I was eating pizzas again. It was, <laughs> it was fantastic. But uh, I only had the bag for, I think it was just under a year. So in 2019, okay. I had it reversed. Um, and I'm back to basically living a normal life i've got 30 wow. centimeters of less bowel than a normal person because they took that out yeah but everything else is the same i can i can eat normally now i don't really have any dietary restrictions i'm not on any medication and at one point i was on about 15 pills a day so it's for two years difference it's an amazing change and it's That's incredible. I, I can only credit the doctors and nurses at adenbrooks because they yeah they were totally on it and how did so how did how did going through something like that almost like change your, I don't know, your attitude to life or your mindset? Mm. Like, mm. it must have been huge. Quite a lot, yeah. Um, at the at the sort of start of it, when I was in hospital, um, I was just really sort of giving up. I was just like, this is mm. awful. I can't really live like this. Um, and something changed in me, like maybe two weeks in. I was right. just like, if I'm here, I might as well be doing something because I'm getting bored. Um, obviously I couldn't work I wasn't working at MSE they gave me some time off to to heal and get better yeah. um, so I, I just started picking up some work of my own so at that point I actually started a blog um, which is my blog now jordancox.com yeah. um, and I, I just sort of blogged about 
ways that I've saved money. And I even blogged about ways that I was making money from my hospital bed because I was, I was just trying to find things to do. I started up my own t-shirt business of couponing t-shirts. Um, I started doing um, some like reselling. I was <laughs> quite a funny story. I was, I was buying things on eBay, some like yeah. Wii bundles and PlayStation bundles on eBay and having them sent to my mum's house. Um, yeah. And I was basically like, mom, can you bring all this stuff in? I'm going to section it all out and sell it all individually and make some profit on it. So I would, I'd take photos of all these like oh individual games and gosh. all these playstations and things, give it back to mom. And then she'd be like my shipping center. So at home, <laughs> if someone bought it, she'd be off out to the post office and posting it. But I think that's one of the things that was keeping me sane, just like doing something to keep me busy. Um, and then at that point, I, I wrote my first book as well in hospital. Yeah, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> I had nothing else to do so I I just sat there and after about two weeks I wrote, I wrote a 100 page book on how to coupon so <laughs> and then I became an Amazon bestseller from my hospital bed which I don't think many people can say <laughs> so I've got that I'm not sure anybody can make that play <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, oh, I, love I it. always like doing some work so to be sat there doing nothing I was just like oh, I need to do something um, yeah but it Ultimately, it taught me, number one, you only have one life. You might as well just do whatever you want. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to go self-employed. After, after I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Did, I, I'm sure that fed you into mm. just leave, leaving the safety of the mm. safety of the, court, the you know, business world and yeah. going out and doing your own thing. I, I already had thoughts before I felt really ill about sort of going do my own thing. But afterwards, I, I sort of knew that that's what I wanted to do long term. Yeah. Um, just to sort of have that freedom and choose what I what I wanted to do because I, I really enjoyed that sort of few months in in hospital just sort of blogging and doing my own thing mm. um and and yeah that's sort of what led me to to today wow and <laughs> and um the other thing that sort of life experience feeds into you is the, or an, another sort of stream of how you earn some of your money is you're an amazing public speaker and I've, <laughs> I've I have been in the audience when you've spoken but you've been over to like America and spoken haven't you and like compared yeah. their events I just I'm, I'm sometimes I'm astounded by by the success of um for someone so young I think you've just taken like the ball by the horns and mm opportunity comes your way then yeah I'll go and do it yeah but to have that I think to have that confidence to be a um and and you you are very self-assured and extremely confident when you stand up at the front of a group of like a hundred of your your fellow (laughs) bloggers or you know when I've seen you speak I just think it's amazing I don't feel it on the inside um but (laughs) it's good that it's on the outside you could never tell that you're nervous (laughs) well I, I had a chat with my mum recently about sort of nerves and I most of the time I don't really get nervous when I'm on stage and I think it's because I know what I'm talking about so if it's yeah. if it's something I've practiced a lot or if I'm talking about coupons like that's my bread and butter I know I can speak to you all hour about it yeah um it, it's when I sort of don't know what I'm doing I get nervous um yeah but yeah I I had sort of a a, a drama background at school I used to perform in musical theatre um I used to do some singing so it was it was sort of that where I got it from, I think. Um, yeah, and yeah. even when I was 15, I started doing some seminars of how to save money on coupons <laughs> at my local theatre. It only really had like four or five people there. Yeah. Um, but it just sort of grew from there. And I've spoke um, at a conference called FinCon, uh, which is a financial bloggers conference in America, which gets thousands of people. Um, yeah. And I've spoken there a couple of times. And then I've uh, emceed the Plutus Awards, which is like their massive award show, which had over a thousand people in the audience last time wow. um and that was actually at the the washington hilton uh, in washington dc which was the same stage that they have the white house correspondence dinner so i stood in the same place as obama as george bush i was just like what is my life <laughs> yeah, I, I think i think you're right with um the confidence of talking about something that you you know a lot about mm-hmm. i remember um so but prior to um, Mrs. Mummy Penny, I, so I had my corporate career of like 16 years and mm-hmm. the last job I did was working for EE. So I mm-hmm. worked for them for about five years. Yeah, five years. And um, every year, so I worked in, uh, one of my jobs was working with the shops. 
Mm -hmm. So every year at Christmas, you'd have to go out and do this like road show. So I was mm -hmm. one of the senior managers. And because I was a senior manager, I had to be a public speaker mm -hmm. at these road shows. So you're talking to like all the managers of the shops. You think there's a thousand shops out there and you, you go around Devon and Cornwall or London <laughs> or Scotland, whatever. And, you, and um, I was talking to them about the like new, exciting commercial propositions that were coming along. But mm -hmm. number one, um, I didn't write the presentation. My boss did. Number two, it, it wasn't an area that I was passionate about in the slightest <laughs> and, and number three I didn't have the like you know ultimate knowledge so I was stressing mm -hmm. about questions being asked me and um, I just remember going on stage to like a, a group of like 100 or 200 store managers and just just dying because I just wasn't prepared I, mm. I hadn't written so it was even the script was full of jokes that wasn't the kind of jokes oh, no. I would make and at one event, we had to all do it in fancy dress, and I was dressed as a Christmas fairy. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Crap! I didn't care about. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a horrible, horrible memory of public speaking. Um, so You've got a picture I, of that you can include. <laughs> oh my god! It was it was awful. It was awful. Oh. Oh, I just remember the faces of the store managers looking at me like, we feel really sorry for you, but you're doing a pretty <laughs> shit job. Um, I, didn't, I, I didn't do any more presentations <laughs> after that. I think I left DE maybe like a year later. But, um, but when I come to do public speaking now, it's mm. like I love doing, and I know I've done a panel event with you, they're mm. just such fun events because... Yeah you're just talking about stuff that you're really passionate about and you love yeah. and you know the information that you're relaying is going to make a difference to you know people's lives that mm. they're going to save some money and yeah be inspired to do something different so yeah it's, yeah. it's a whole different ball game when you yeah we did the uh the event with money for the masters i think wasn't it yeah was fantastic you were great at that i think you don't you do some at pension b as well sometimes um, oh, oh, I've done all sorts of events now. I'd what love I've, to come I've, and see you. Yeah, well, uh, there's what I've started doing recently, which is, it's, it's almost like this has just sort of happened by accident, mm. is I've got loads of companies approaching me to do like financial well-being talks to like their internal employees. Oh, wow. That's so, great. So, um, I've done, how many, I've done like maybe five or six in the last sort of two or three months. And it's, it's, it's perfect being done online because mm. they just book out like a Zoom meeting that can have hold like a thousand people or whatever. <laughs> and um, you're just um, talking about, I, I've, I've just got a little set plan of talking about budgeting, talking about um, paying off debt and a little bit of lacing my story in and a bit of sort of emergency savings and preparing for the future. But yeah. it's, um, you know, it's, it's bread and butter stuff that we both know inside out. But mm. I think what we, what you um, appreciate when you talk to these people is, is people are so scared of talking mm. about money. Um, they won't talk to anybody about money. Um, they think it's too much hassle to, you know, sort any financial aspects out of their lives or they bury their head in the sand about things mm -hmm. that might be going wrong. And just to have a person stood there in front of them talking honestly about, yeah, I've got myself into loads of debt. Mm -hmm. um, it happens. This is how it happened. This is how I got myself out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just that um, honesty about the other thing is that big life events happen, like mm -hmm. you got really ill um i've got divorced these things happen mm. that can end up costing you a lot of money like a loss of loss of revenue or just yep. costing you a shed load of money so um yeah it's um they're, they're going down really well and so mm. i think a lot of companies are switching on to the fact that um their mental well-being of their staff is highly highly driven by financial well-being so um totally a lot more of that work come along but um, yeah, no, we did. We did an amazing panel event with um, our friend Damien from Money to the Masses, uh, maybe like eighteen months ago when we were allowed to do events. And I know. We had a huge audience and talked mm. to them all about um, investing and pensions and money saving. It was mm. great. Do you know one thing that I took from that event is I I wanted to do like my own. I wanted to try and do like a a road show of going around to different places and basically teaching people how to save money and manage their money better. 
Um, and that was sort of around January, February last year, I was planning that and then COVID hit. So that's mm -hmm. when, when we're allowed to sort of see each other again and go to the theatre and sort of see things, I'd love to, to, to do some of that. Maybe get people like guests like you to, to come on at different, different events and basically just have a, a massive conversation with people. Yeah, yeah, because you can't be that, um, you can't be that face to face real life interaction, can you? And mm. the ability to you know meet the people at the end of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, I miss it, I really miss it. Oh, but, um, the virtual stuff is all we've got to do at the moment, it'll the, do for the short term. Um, oh, how long have we been talking for? I said this conversation would <laughs> meander into loads of different ways. <laughs> I need to get some like um actual facts and recommendations from okay. you so i'd like to of because of your last podcast you put out about money making i'd like to get mm. some um things from you on that because i think mm. people listening or, or watching um i've talked about uncertainty already people are everybody's feeling really uncertain but there's lots of things we can do to that won't take very much time that can mm -hmm. save us some money particularly now in january you know looking forward this year so mm -hmm. what top tips have you got to like save some money and then we'll talk about making some extra money because there's only so much you can strip your budgets back although mm -hmm. I, I look at my direct debits every three months and there's always something i find which i can either cancel yep. or um renegotiate or strip mm -hmm. back that's so. that's probably one of the best top tips to look through mm -hmm. your direct debits and, and be brutal with it because I, mm -hmm. I had a netflix subscription which i just was not using so i've cancelled it and you, you can go back netflix. yeah I, I just wasn't using it <laughs> but if you if you have anything you you don't use just be brutal cancel it and you can go back at any time so it's not gonna be the be all and end all if you absolutely need it at a certain point um Probably some other money saving tips that I would give is apps are the, pl are the place to go right now. There are so many apps on your phone that you can download which saves you money. Um, one of my favorites is Airtime Rewards, um, where you upload your cards, so your Visa and MasterCards. And if you shop at any of the retailers on Airtime Rewards, so that's um, Boots, Primark, um, sometimes Morrison's is on there, there's Halfords, there's loads of different high street retailers. Uh, and if you shop there, you get cash back into your account. And that you don't have to do anything with. It's, it's passive, so it tracks it based on your spending. You don't have to click through anything uh, yeah. and you save money and it goes off of your mobile phone bill. And I've, I've earned, gosh, tens, maybe nearly a hundred pounds just in my own purchases on the app now, which has come off my phone bill, which has saved me a lot of money. Um, there's also an app called Shopmium, which is a cashback app for Shopmium. supermarkets. Shopmium. That's S-H-O-P-M-I-U-M. -S yes, yeah, that's yeah. it. Um, and that's that's one of my favorites as well because it's an app on your phone where there's a load of different um items on there from the supermarket some of them are free so you can just go in there pick it up uh, and get it for free but if there's anything you see on there you basically make a mental note of it or add it to your shopping list go in and buy it and then take a picture of your receipt to prove that you've bought it and you get some cash back into your account which you can withdraw straight to paypal so there's like free Pringles on there, there's free yogurts on there. There's, gosh, there's 50% off of. Oh, you're frozen. Are you going to come back? Called uh, Generate Ads, which is an ad blocker for uh, a Chrome or Firefox browser where you add it on and it basically blocks all of the annoying adverts you see all over the web. So if you're on like the Daily Mail website and there's adverts here, adverts here, adverts here, oh, it yeah. blocks all of that. Ah. Uh, and it, it replaces it with pictures of pugs with nice tropical locations with inspirational quotes. And it gives you money for it. And to ah. the website, it gives you the money. Uh, and it goes into like tokens, which you can then redeem for Amazon vouchers, Sainsbury's vouchers, prizes like Amazon Echo Dots and things. Um, so it's a great way to, to earn some money from doing something you do every single day. So that one's called Generate. 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 So Jenna and then eight. Oh, very good. Yeah. All those adverts on those websites, particularly the tabloid ones. Mm. There's a lot. There's very, they are very annoying. They are a lot. <laughs> But yeah, those are probably my tips for, for saving money. Cool. And then, um, so you've just put out, so your podcast started um, the beginning of this year. It did. And I was one of your first guests, which is very, you very much. 
Um, and um, with your one you just published last Friday, you talked about money making. Now, mm. my, I, I've, I want to know what ideas you've got because you always seem to know about stuff I don't know about because <laughs> there's a lot of money making stuff which has, um, the, the problem with money making online is I often think it's too good to be true. Mm. Uh, a, a lot of it is too good to be true actually. Mm -hmm. um, and um, then you've got other things which it takes you loads and loads of time just to mm -hmm. earn like a little bit of money. So have you got anything that, because my, my go-to way of making money mm -hmm. has always been um, mystery shopping. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got like a great mystery shopping company I work with um, where I can go get free like spa days and free mm -hmm. coffee and stuff. But you can't do any of that when we're no. at this point. So what is there out there where you can make some extra money in COVID times? Um, I've got a few ways. Um, some of them do take more effort than others. Um, mm -hmm. My first one, which I actually really enjoy, it is like a side hustle, so it does require a little bit of work. Um, mm -hmm. It's saving, it's making money on a website called Fiverr. Uh, have you ever used Fiverr or heard of it? I've heard of it. I've mm -hmm. never used it. There. Is this where you do your um, voiceovers? That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. This is such a good. So but, it is. It's amazing. It's um, so Fiverr is a freelancer's marketplace where you can post anything you're good at, any skill you've got, um, and people can buy it, buy your skill, and you complete a job for them, and then they, they give you the money. Um, yeah. And it's supposed to be from $5 because it's, it's called Fiverr, but you can scale up how much you charge. Um, right. And I signed up there with a voiceover service. So if anyone wanted a, a deep British male voiceover to tell them about their luxury dog food, then, then I, can, I can record a voiceover for them. Um, and I did, I think, 40 jobs I've done now. Um, okay. Yeah, I've done a lot. I actually did one for a luxury airline company in Miami, which was <gasps> insane. I can't even remember the name of it, but, but it was like, do you like luxury getaways? We at Luxury Airlines can help you find your destination. It was, it was, <laughs> I need to find it somewhere. It's but probably how much, out there. how much did you get paid? So in total, I've earned over a thousand pounds. But there were some jobs that I got maybe two to 300 from, and that was sort of longer stuff. If they wanted me to read a thousand words of script, then I, I could do that. And it, it sort of earned me a lot more. Um, but it's not just voiceovers you can do on there. There's graphic design. There's, um, if you're really techy, there's some really easy ones. Like I can transfer a document from word to PDF. Like there, there are people that buy those because they can't oh. do it themselves. Yeah. And they, they charge $5 for it. But if you get the right amount of people coming in, I mean, that's easy money. Um, but that's, but, you can just do that on your computer for free. <laughs> some people can't. So they, they pay people on Fiverr to do it. In fact, there's, wow. when I was writing an ebook, there's um, something where you, people format into a Kindle version using KDP, which I can do quite easily, but people yeah. buy that so much on Fiverr because they don't know how to do it. Um, there's, there's proofreading editing. So if you're good at writing, if you're a writer or a blogger, you can post things on there. Um, and there's even weirder stuff as well. Like there's, I will be a Tinder matchmaker for you. Um, <laughs> there's, there's psychics on there that say, I will uh, get back at your ex uh through psychic powers it's it's wow there's some weird stuff on there so i need to go check out fiverr this sounds really you can post anything and people will likely buy it um so so yeah if any skill you've got just plug it on there see what happens see if yeah. you get any orders from it um so that's that's probably my my favorite way of making money but that's because i i like doing voiceover and i like speaking into a mic basically um yeah but there are other ways that are perhaps less uh, taxing. There's one of my favorites at the moment is um, referring friends to different websites. Do you know, I was just going to say to you, let's talk refer a friend. Cause, yeah. um, when, when, you've got some, when you've got something that you're really, you love and are passionate about and it saves you loads of money, like this is going to sound really sad now. But um, <laughs> like, I, I genuinely think like Oxford Energy are a really good energy yeah. company. Like whenever I've had any issues with them, like all well, my bills or whatever, like their customer service is great. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I can get renewable energy and, uh, but they've got a really great referral scheme where, because mm -hmm. uh, the referral schemes I really like are the ones where you split the reward between mm -hmm. you and the person that you're referring. So yeah. it's not just like, Oh, I, I'm going to get a hundred quid if you sign 
what's yeah. correct, get yeah, 100 quid for somebody signing up for something. But um, with Octopus, they you get 50 pounds each. So the person refer you're referring gets 50 quid and I get 50 quid and it's a credit to your bill. Mm. But it's it's just, so I have no um, shame whatsoever. Um, I talk about that all the time because I genuinely think they're a great company. So it's yeah. those kind of, and I think all companies have got these referral schemes as well, haven't they? So Fair enough. They, they want more people to join. So they'll give yeah. either you or the person you're referring incentives to, to sign up. Um, one of them that I think is really great at the moment is top cashback. So you can get, yeah. I think it's 25 to 30 pounds if you refer someone and then they get five pounds. So it's, yeah. it's not as much for them, but I mean, top cashback is like the Holy grail for, for money savers like you or me. So yeah. that's we were, something we like huge fans of top cashback. Mm -hmm. So if you refer friends to that, they, they save some money and then you get some money. Um, yeah. there's all of the like Uber eats Deliveroo. Yeah. You can get yeah. free food if you refer people who haven't used it and then you get free food as well. Um, yeah. The recipe then, boxes as well, they've yes. got a lot of schemes. All of them have got referral schemes. Mm. My, yeah, my, my, my Mindful Chef box this week was free because I had somebody redeem a referral credit. So Fantastic. Cool. Yeah, oh. free food for a week. <laughs> and then the one that I've probably earned the most from is Trading212. Uh, that's like a, a trading app oh, on for stocks I've, and shares. I've seen a lot of people posting their referral links, yeah. Mm. So yeah. if, you, if you get a friend to sign up through your referral link uh, and they deposit just one pound, they don't even have to invest it in any stock. If they deposit a pound, they get a free share and you get a free share and it's up to the value of a hundred pounds. So it's, yeah. it's completely random. So you could get one worth 10 pounds, you could get one worth 50, 80, um, but you just, you get a free share. And the thing is you can cash out the share as soon as you get it. So whatever money that is worth, it goes into your account. Wait 30 days and then you can withdraw it to your bank. You don't have to do anything. It's basically free cash. I, I got a free share, which was worth about 50 quid about a month ago. So I let it sit in there, withdrew it, and I've got 50 quid. Happy Amazing. days. Amazing. And um, something which um, you, you might know more up-to-date information than I do, but um, there's, there's, there's often really good bonuses for switching your current account. Mm. Um, I know that a lot of banks sort of stopped them last year and then they've sort of slowly started to bring them back again. Mm. Um, I've, I've never done it though. Because I I, I, it, it's almost like, um, I, <laughs> I was thinking about this yesterday. I hate having to change my mobile phone because I mm. hate having to go through that process of resetting up everything on that new mobile phone. So yeah. I've had the same phone for like three years and it, you know, it still works. I dropped mm. it and it smashed a bit, but um, it's like, I, I just can't face switching to another phone. And I, mm. I know that the phones tried to make it easier by, you know, saving your apps to a cloud and it all gets yeah. transferred over, but it never all works like that. And I'm, I'm the same with um, switching my bank account as well. I just mm. can't face it. I, I had this chat with Andy Webb, Be Clever With Your Cash, before, and he does it all the time. He's made I know. so much from it. But I think at the moment you can get like six cases of wine from Virgin Bank, maybe. And then yeah. there's obviously the one with Nationwide, where if you're signed up and you refer a friend, you each get £100. But yeah, I think a lot yeah. of them have stopped again. Um, yeah. I, I don't think they're, they're doing any during COVID because <laughs> they don't really have much money. Well, they do have money to give, but... They haven't got yeah. the resource of they mm -hmm. to process all that extra stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But like it, it's, it's a, when you actually think about the amount of um, services you use and products you use, and if you're mm -hmm. happy to recommend them to your friends, even if it's like two or three recommendations a year that people mm -hmm. sign up to, it, it could be a few hundred quid. So yeah, we could all do with a few extra hundred quid. Couldn't we? Absolutely. There's something you can do from your sofa as well while you're watching EastEnders or whatever. Yeah, Just yeah, on your phone. yeah, very good. Right, I think we've been talking for quite a long time, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that always happens. That always happens. Mm -hmm. Um, it was um really great to talk to you and to Thank learn you. a lot about your backstory. And mm. there's there's quite a few things that I didn't know about you there. Um, oh really? Yeah, yeah. I just. I just think you've done incredibly well and I love seeing your journey progress and obviously I'll be here to help you along the way because um, it's just good to share knowledge, isn't it, between us? Absolutely. We can, we can collaborate on things. and Yeah, help get through not, COVID not, together. 
exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah everybody yeah so um the people watching and listening how can they find you on social media mm-hmm. and your website your jordancox.com yeah jordancox.com is my website and mm-hmm. my mother wanted nobody to find me so she spelt my name with an o so it's jordancox.com um yeah. and i also, always have to check that is I know. it an o or is it an a <laughs> the amount of emails i get with a it's i'm, I'm used to it now yeah uh, but uh, Twitter as well, Jordan underscore Cox with an O. Uh, and then for my new podcast, it's the Secrets to Saving podcast, which is available everywhere. You get podcasts, Amazon, Spotify, Apple, all of them. Check it out. The Secrets of oh, Saving, yes. Check and listen to else. my episode with Mrs. Mummy Penny herself <laughs> as well for Secrets to Saving when you have kids. It's fantastic. Yes. Yes, it's a very good episode. <laughs> um, cool. Right. Thank you ever so much for coming Thank on you, to Mrs. Mommy Penny Talks. Always great to talk to you. And you. And I will press stop record and say goodbye. Goodbye. Don't go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but don't-